In this video, I demonstrate how to use a function that I wrote called shade norm to shade under a normal PDF. Uh, this is a function that uses the polygon command, uh, which is really just a standard way to uh, shade areas under a density in R. Using the polygon command can get uh, sort of a little bit cumbersome, kind of have to think your way through it. Uh, and this command that I've written makes it a little bit easier to shade under a normal distribution uh, and basically anyone who knows what they want to do and after they watch this video should be able to shade under a normal distribution using R. There's going to be a link in the description where you can actually download the code for this function. Once you do that, copy it into a script file like I've done here and you can run that entire script file. Running that script file will load a function into R. And you can see it here in my R Studio window, uh, all the different options, and we'll go through each of those. Uh, but what you can do is you can now, if you want to, you can save this as your default workspace, and then you'll be able to use that function in the future just as long as you go back to your default workspace. I'm not going to go through the details about how I coded that up, but you're welcome to look to see uh, sort of how I implemented this. Uh, so let's go back into uh, sort of a demonstration file. I'll also post this code. There's some nice defaults to the shade norm uh, command. Uh, it defaults to a normal 0, 1, standard normal, and it defaults to uh, percentiles of 2.5 uh, percentile and the 97.5 percentile. So if we run this line, we'll see this. We've shaded uh, just out, outside of 1.96 on the right and uh, below negative uh, 1.96 on the left. But you might want to have a little bit more flexibility and my function allows you more flexibility uh, with an argument here uh, called below you can specify where you want to sort of have the where you want to start shading below so let's run this and see how that works so i said let's set that lower endpoint and shade below negative 1.5 and the only thing it changed was the lower endpoint the upper endpoint stayed as the default now Maybe that's not what you wanted to do. Maybe what you wanted to do was just shade below. I've got another argument to this function called just below. It's a logical argument. If you say just below equals true, uh, its default is false. But if you set just below equal to true and you run this, it will only shade the below region. It will ignore sort of the defaults and everything. You won't actually shade above any, any area. Um, so, so if you want a lower tail probability, this is the way uh, to get it. If you want to illustrate it, uh, shading under a normal, uh, normal density. And we can do the same thing for above, and we can use the just above logical command, and that will do the exact same thing as just below. Now, if you wanted to have flexibility on both endpoints, you can use these two, uh, use these two arguments in tandem. So we can, go we can go below negative 1.5 and above 1.5, and that shades kind of what, in, in your mind, you might say that's outside of the interval minus 1.5 to 1.5. Well, I've also implemented uh, an option called outside. If you give it a vector, it's going to plot outside of that range of that vector. So, um, so the simplest thing is you could so say outside 2.5 and negative 2.5. Just give it the endpoints, and it's going to give you uh, outside negative 2.5 and 2.5. If I had said negative 1.5 and 1.5 in here, it would give you the same plot, but I wanted to show you the plot window changing. Um, the outside command actually works with larger vectors, so if uh, for whatever reason maybe you didn't want to actually go in and figure out what was the smallest number in this uh, set of points I want to plot outside of, what's the largest number, well, you can just uh, specify the outside command, set that equal to some vector, and it'll sort of figure out what's the smallest and what's the biggest. It actually works by taking the minimum and the maximum. Another area that you might be interested in plotting are between areas. You might be interested in plotting between uh, 2.5 and negative 2.5. Here's one. Uh, we can also shade. Uh, we don't want to bother figuring out what's the largest and what's the smallest in a particular vector. We can do between um, 
in, in this list. So um, maybe I should call that among, but between also works by taking the minimum and the maximum and then just plotting the, or shading the area underneath the uh, normal density between the lower endpoint and the upper endpoint of uh, that vector. So that's, uh, that's kind of just with the standard normal that shows you how to work with uh, above, below, outside, and between. You can get any area you wish to uh, illustrate under a, under a standard normal just using those commands. But you might not want to work just with a standard normal. Turns out the, the mu and the sig commands will allow you to specify the mean and the standard deviation of the normal density that you'd like to illustrate. Here's the default above below uh, sort of uh, allows you to look just at percentiles of uh, two and a half percent to 97.5 percent. Uh, but we changed the mean to two and the standard deviation to 10. And in case you were wondering, you can use between, you could use outside, you could use below it with just below, you could use below, um, and all of those would work. Here's an example with between negative two and 14. You can see that you plot and you can shade the area between negative two and 14. And you can do the same thing with, uh, with outside, so negative five and 14, just to show you, um, show you the graph actually changing. You might be interested in specifying different colors. So let's go back to um, an outside plot uh, where we specify the color uh, blue. So here we specified the color blue, plotting outside of the interval negative 3 to 12 with a normal distribution of, with a mean of 2 and a standard deviation of 10. And we could specify it to be blue. Uh, you could do red, green, a whole host of different colors. Um, maybe you think that this is uh, too dense. Uh, the density default, the plot density default, is a number called 40. Here I'll show you what it looks like if you specify it at uh, 15, and the argument is DENS equals, and this tells you how many, um, how many lines per inch. So here's a density equal to 15. Maybe you think that looks nicer, or maybe you want something closer to a solid color, so make the density equal to 150. But uh, you can play around with whatever, uh, whatever densities you wish, and uh, you, can, you can basically yeah, get this plot to look however you want as far as colors and as far as plot density. Now the other thing that you might be interested in doing is plotting one of, of these and then being able to plot on top of that one um, with some other uh, normal distribution but you might be interested in sort of relating to normal distributions and showing where the different areas sort of line up or don't line up uh, this option lines, if you set lines equal to true inside the shade norm command, the function is going to recognize that you want to plot uh, this as a line and just keep continue modifying this plot. Instead we'll plot our, our new density over, over the top of the old one and we'll also shade over the top and so we get a plot with everything on it. Um, so th in practice this might be useful for illustrating um, power or illustrating type 1 and type 2 error in a, in a, different, um, in a different setting. And so I wanted to show an example of where you might actually use something like this. So suppose that we're doing some kind of hypothesis test. We think that the true mean might actually be 5, but the null hypothesis is uh, a mean of 6. Let's say the standard deviation of the population is 8. There are 250 observations. And using that information, we can compute the standard error of the mean to be the uh, standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. And let's say that we want to do a two-sided hypothesis test where alpha equals 0.05, so we put 2.5% probability in each tail. So we want to, to sort of, uh, we, we want to set it up so that we can uh, say, all right, now we've got our critical values uh, and we know where we're going to reject. This will tell, it'll give us a nor the, 
the quantiles of a normal distribution with the mean under the null hypothesis, that's 6, and the uh, standard deviation of the standard error, and that's going to give us sort of approximate critical values under an assumption of normality, which isn't so bad because our sample size is 250. So that's going to be kind of our hypothesis test, sort of set it up, see, see what this looks like. And in case you're interested, the critical values are going to be uh, 5.0 and uh, 6.99. Now, what's, what's kind of weird here is that these aren't critical values in terms of the test statistic. These are critical values in terms of what is the computed value of my x bar. Um, if I wanted the critical values in terms of the test statistic, I would have just used the standard normal, and I would have stayed on that scale. But I'd like to plot this on the original scale. So we can go ahead and plot sort of a rejection region uh, on this uh, for this hypothesis test. This is the null hypothesized density centered at the null hypothesized value of 6. And we're plotting the area where we, of the rejection under this density uh, in the rejection region. It's a two-tailed test. We reject if we're sort of less than 5 and greater than, oh, what it was that, 6.99, so greater than 7. So that's where we're going to reject. But now suppose that the truth was that the mean was 5. So that's, that's going to be our alternative hypothesis, uh, so to speak. So we could, under that true hypothesis, we could give my shade norm command, and that mean, keep the same standard error because we don't really know what else to do about the standard deviation of the of x bar and then specify this lines equal true command to tell r that we want to uh, write onto this plot so we can relate the null distribution to the alternative distribution and we're going to shade under this alternative distribution with the color green and instead of doing outside where we, where we reject we'll do between where we fail to reject and so we'll be plotting the probability that we fail to reject given that the alternative is true and see there's the alternative distribution centered right here at five that's mu true mu alternative and we shaded this area of re, uh, failing to reject uh, a null hypo or failing to reject the null hypothesis when the alternative is true. So what we've done here, in, and this is actually kind of an interesting exercise, what we've done here is we've illustrated uh, both um, the type 1 error, a uh, probability of a type 1 error in the gray under the, under the null distribution, and we've illustrated the probability of a type 2 error in the green under the alternative distribution. So this is one application of my shade norm command. Um, there are many others. If you just want to have a nice uh, graph uh, where you're actually showing an area under a curve, uh, under, a, under a bell curve, and you just want to, you don't want to deal with the polygon command, this is a nice intuitive way uh, to be able to shade under a normal distribution. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I also hope that maybe you'll find this function, this shade norm function that I wrote helpful, and you'll find many applications for it.